Hello everyone. Uh, today's Tuesday, which I know means it's Electric Tuesday under the new regime. Uh, but for me, it's Treehouse Day because I've got some work to do. All right, let's give you the quick tour and it will be a quick tour. <laughs> um, let's start down here. So, uh, the ladder actually will be around that side and will come up to that entry point there where the kids will then come onto this platform here, which is obviously still to be finished, hasn't got a base on it yet, but they'll climb onto that platform. It'll obviously be fully filled in with a floor in that hatch there. Uh, that is going to be cut out uh, to be a, a lift up trap door. So they'll climb up from the bottom level up through the trap door where they will emerge inside this box. Uh, this will all have walls on it of this corrugated steel. As you can see, I've started on that. Uh, it'll have a window running all the way round so they can see and spy on people. Um, I'm considering, and I've been asked to consider, uh, from here, putting some kind of pulley system on here that goes down to the floor uh, to be able to lift up supplies uh, in a bucket or something. Um, so that's probably going to happen as well. Um, but what a cool place. And the views from up here are pretty spectacular. By the way, there is a uh, rumour running around the village, just started yesterday, that in that church, just through there, that church that you can see through there, which is kind of next door to us, there you go, um, it's a very old 13th century church, amazing building, and the word on the street around here is that we've got some royal visitors coming this weekend, Harry and Meghan, how about that? Um, unfortunately, we won't be here because we're going to Ibiza um, tomorrow uh, for a long weekend, um, which will also be awesome, by the way. But uh, how cool. So I'm kind of half expecting MI5 to be uh, sort of scoping out the place this week. Um, I was also half wondering whether I could rent out my treehouse to photographers for an absolute fortune. <laughs> I was halfway through that the other day and the battery ran out, that's why I've had to come and finish that bit off. Um, but as it's Electric Tuesday, um, we could use this uh, very simple and basic electric drill to explain how uh, a motor generator unit works in a Formula 1 car or an e-motor uh, works in a Formula E car, because basically they're very similar concepts. Essentially, there are very few components, both to the energy recovery system on a Formula One car and to this electric battery operated drill. So it has, uh, first of all, a battery, or as we call them in Formula One, uh, on Formula One cars, an energy store, but it's essentially a battery. It's a place to save and store electric energy. So that goes on the bottom of the drill. That's your energy store. In a Formula One car, that is stored underneath the fuel cell. You might have seen them, big square box, and that is where all the electrical energy is stored. Now, of course, running up through the handle of this electric drill is some wiring that takes that electrical energy from this energy store or battery up into the electric motor. Now, the electric motor sits inside here, and that's obviously the thing that spins the end of that when you pull the trigger. It's really, really simple, hardly any components. There's a slight, there's a controller uh, and a switch, of course, which is your trigger. On a Formula One car, that switch uh, is connected to various electronic software. Uh, so the switch might be connected to the throttle pedal or it might be mapped into the software to apl be applied at certain points on a lap or on a qualifying lap, that software will allow that switch to be deployed fully for the whole lap, giving you maximum electrical energy from your battery or energy store 
to the electric motor. Now let's talk about the MGUK because that's the most uh, standard one if you like. It's the sort of thing that you find in most uh, electric cars, most hybrid cars. Uh, it's an electric motor that also works as a generator. Now this thing here, that energy, energy is taken from there through the controller, through the motor and it spins the electric drill at the end. That's how it works. If I were to put a big cranking handle on the end of this, put it in reverse and crank that round really quickly by hand, I would actually start using the electric motor in here as a generator, working in reverse to generate electricity back through the wires in this handle, back into the energy store or battery. I would, have, I would essentially, I'd be charging up the battery by turning this very quickly by hand. That's exactly how these motor generator units work. So when the car needs, let me just come up a little bit more, it's really uncomfortable. When the uh, Formula One car needs to deploy maximum power, it'll be using its internal combustion engine. It will then deploy the ERS system or the energy recovery system. It'll deploy the MGUK, which is the motor that's connected directly to the crankshaft, to the engine. So when they want maximum power, when they're full throttle going down a straight, for example, the uh, internal combustion engine will do everything it can. It will be flat out, uh, pumping as much fuel in as it can. In addition to that now in Formula One, we use the MGUK, which deploys as much electrical energy as it can through the MGUK, connected via some kind of timing gears onto the crankshaft to help spin the engine, turn it faster, make it generate even more power. Essentially, the MGUK, or the motor, is connected directly to the rear wheels of a Formula One car when they need it. Now, when you start lifting off the throttle and the car goes into regen mode, both in a Formula E car or a Formula One car or in your electric road car, the same thing happens. The wheels, of course, on the car are still turning because of the motion of the car traveling down the road. What we now do, instead of me talking about turning a cranking handle on here to turn this by hand, we use the turning engine, or the turning motion rather, of the, the wheels, the rear wheels of the car, to essentially spin that MGUK. That will then turn from being a motor into a generator. It will send electrical current back through the wires that go back to the energy store underneath the fuel cell in a Formula One car, remember? And it will start charging up that battery or that energy store, saving some of that electrical energy for later on when they might want to deploy it to affect an overtake or defend against an overtake or just give them maximum power out of a corner onto a long straight. It's a really simple process, but one that's so effective, we're gonna see it very soon in all road cars that we're driving on the road. That's how effective the system is. So get used to it. Anyway, that was a nice easy way of me turning treehouse building into Electric Tuesday. <laughs> Better crack on. Now, of course, up there, I'm talking mostly about the MGUK, but the MGUH is pretty similar in the way that it operates if we boil it down to basic terms. It's still a motor generator unit. It's still being turned by something. So whereas the MGUK is being turned by the rotational movement of the, the rear wheels of the car, the car still driving forward, by using that forward motion and the spinning motion of the rear wheels, and therefore the spinning motion of the crankshaft, we turn the MGUK to generate that energy. With the MGUH, it's doing the same thing, but it's just inside the turbo. So in between the two halves of the turbo, the turbo, of course, being driven by the exhaust gases coming out of the, uh, the internal combustion engine, that thing's spinning at incredible speeds, well over 100,000 RPM. So the turning motion of that, of course, drives the electric motor in the MGUH, which does exactly the same as the MGUK, starts to generate energy, electrical energy inside the motor, feeding it back, either back to the energy store or the battery to be saved and used later, or with the MGUH, we can actually feed it directly down to the MGUK to be used immediately to help power the car go faster. Um, the two differences, I guess, or the biggest differences, in the regulations, the MGUK is limited in the amount of energy you can harvest over the course of a lap, two megajoules. With the MGUH, though, it's not limited. You can harvest as much energy as you possibly want to, as you possibly can from the MGUH. As I said, some of it you can be putting into the battery for, for use later. Others, though, you can help to use the power of the car. And it's the cars or the power units that have the most efficient MGUHs, like the Mercedes, now like the Ferrari, particularly like the Ferrari, I think, in recent months, um, which have the biggest power 
uh, deployment available to them, both over the course of a single lap, but also over the course of a race. In qualifying, you know, we talk about power, mo power uh, party mode. Um, in qualifying, you set the, the software map to run maximum everything. So you're using maximum electrical energy from the MGUK, max from the MGUH. You can only do that for one lap because then you've emptied the battery, you've emptied the energy store, and you then need to go on to a cool down, lamp, uh, cool down lap or a recharge lap before you can then go again at maximum power. In the race, you'll have it set so that, yes, you'll be able to use when the, when the throttle goes flat out, coming out of a corner onto a straight, for example, you'll use maximum deployment for the length of that straight, but you'll save some. You'll save some energy in the battery, in the energy store for use if you come under attack from someone behind, if you need to suddenly start pushing and building a gap to make your tyre strategy work, for example, or if you need to get past somebody, that's when you start cranking it up back into party mode or up to maximum power, and that's when you drain everything out. And even in the race, then, you may have to go onto a recharge lap where you're not able to deploy electrical energy and just have to harvest during that braking phase and from the MGUH whilst it's... Uh, spinning at those incredible speeds via the turbo. I hope that makes some sense.